Hey guys, what is up? We are mixing things up a little bit today, and uh, because I have exams coming up, I don't have time to necessarily do a full episode of the, the Java gaming, although, I mean, this episode could end up as long as that, we'll see. Um, but to mix things up, we're going to delve into the world of C++, because I like to vary things and kind of keep you guys guessing a little bit. Um, it, because we were dealing with games in Java, I kind of uh, assumed that you had a development system, and a development environment already set up on your computer. Um, I assumed that you already had Eclipse and the JDK and the Android Development Kit, and that you were uh, could, you know, install the GWT um, on your own as well. In this, um, I'll actually walk you through a little bit more because we're going to be doing a basic basic stuff um, so to follow along you're going to go to this sexy purple and blue website I, I don't know why they got their color choice the way it was I'm a person who loves bright colors and stuff but I I will never understand this uh, I digress but um, you're going to go to Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows desktop I have yet to use 2012 I've always used 2010 so we'll see what differences uh, there are. But basically, you're going to expand the for Windows desktop and just click the install now right here. You can pick your language. You can do a language pack, you know, like the Polsky or whatever you so choose. Click install now. That'll walk you through all that. Um, I would show you how, but I mean, it's a, it's a download process. This is a really, really small file. It's a, it's a downloader and installer so that it'll handle everything for you. You have to fill out a little bit, a little form. It'll ask you for a business name. Just say independent or something. I, I put down student. It's really not a big deal. Um, so you've got that. You've got it all set up. You open it up. Boom. Bam. This is what it looks like. Um, you can either go to File, New Project, hit Control shift n or click New Project here. Whatever floats your boat. Um, when you first start it up, I've opened it up already. It'll probably look like this, I believe. Uh, we'll, you're going to not want a Visual Basic. You'll want a C++, Win32, Win32 console application. You don't want to create a directory. And I'm going to call this Episode 1. And we don't need source control for what we're doing. Um, we'll click OK. Don't click finish. Do not click the finish. Click next. Make it an empty project, otherwise compiling will be a headache for you. You probably won't need SDL for what we're dealing with. And then you can click finish once you've done those two check boxes. Click finish. It'll create everything for you. And this will probably be on this side of your screen. I dragged it over here because this is how 2010 is set up, and I prefer it over on this side. But if you right-click over here, you can add a new item, and that's what we're going to want to do. And it'll be, you know, you can go through and see the different stuff we have for a UI. We have a Windows form. Uh, we have a CPP file and a header file, component class, web stuff, uh, like an XML text file, test a unit test class, property sheet, a bunch of stuff. But what we really want is the code stuff. We want a C++ file. We won't need a header for our purposes. But we're going to call it, we'll just call it main. And we'll add that. And we're going to need to include a few things. The first is IO stream. And um, the other one we won't deal with yet, but we need to say that we're using a uh, namespace std giggles to the immature people out there. Next we're going to need the starter method. And if you're used to Java at all, you're used to a uh, static void main. A static void, yeah, public static void main. Uh, this is an int main, so it might be a little bit weird to you, you are going to return zero. Returning zero means that your program uh, ended successfully. If you return anything other than zero, uh, it's an assumption that you're, you have an error. And if you also uh, 
have done any Java work, you're used to something that looks like this. You're used to some command line arguments, and you don't get that in C++. It's just int main. That basic. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. They don't have that in 2010 where it's all the dynamic stuff uh, showing up as you type quite that quick. Um, I digress. So let's play around with something. Let's uh, let's get some output. This is output exclamation point and the uh, the end line. Um, this serves several useful purposes. Uh, First, it serves as a new line character, so any text after this will be on the next line. Also, you can do something like this. This is more output. And that's perfectly valid. However, there will not be a new line character at the end of it, and there are really, I believe there are very rare circumstances when this would not even get outputted because the inline character forces a flush to the command line. Um, this looks different if you're coming from certain other languages. This is basically, pretend it's a stream, um, you're sending this text and because the arrow is going towards C out, that's how you say that, C out, not count. Um, you're sending this text and you're streaming it to C out. Um, if you are uh, know anything about other programming languages, you know about return values, and we'll deal. If you don't know programming, we'll deal with uh, how, what this does. What's the significance of this later? But for now, for the people who are uh, know anything about programming, we can chain these together um, because this will be done and then it returns a cout object which is why we can do it again um, if you don't understand that don't worry about it I'm sure we'll hit it at some point so if you hit F7 it'll build it and it should say succeeded if you get anything other than succeeded that is uh, not not good not all that great um, but you can see here it says build succeeded. I was just rearranging everything. And then if you hit control and F5, it should run. And you can say it says this is output. So we've got this. And then we have our end line. So that's why this is on the next line. And we can say this is more output. And you can see the press any key to continue is on the same line because we don't have an end line or a new line character. Now, I might as well teach you a little bit about manipulation a bit. If you hit backslash n, that is the equivalent of a new line. So if we build that and run this again, you can see the text, the push and key to continue, is on the next line. Now, uh, the next thing to learn when you're dealing with a programming language is data types. So uh, you have integers, which are whole numbers. Integers are not, it's a little long. Um, and oh, what do I need to? Oh, wow! I don't know what I was thinking. Int number equals that. All right. So, um, is that too large of an integer? I forget the max and mins for all the different data types. But an integer is a whole number. An integer is not a decimal. For a decimal, you can use a long or you can use a double, or you can use a float, and there are a couple different kinds. Um, integers are also negative. Uh, there is a, not a byte, is there a bit? I f there is a care, or char, which um, char thing equals, and it would just be a single character such as that. And then one of the ones that we'll use heavily is a string. So we'll say string name equals Dustin. And you can see how this would be handy because it stores our name stuff. So string Dustin is cool, exclamation point. And then we can at the end say see out name. 
and then inline. And we actually, to use that properly, we need to include string. And that should, yep, that should clear all of our errors up. So we need these two include statements at the top. And if we hit F7 and build this baby, and let's let her run, we see it says Dustin is cool. So uh, programs, there's three steps to every program. It's input, computation, and output. So this program, as cool as it is, falls short on two of those steps. We have no input and therefore there's nothing to calculate. We just input a output a garbled mess. So what if we want to uh, to say uh, let's say that we want to I don't know calculate the average of two numbers. So let's use a let's just for the heck of it, let's just use a float. You'll f we'll talk about what different data types are good for. Float has some imperfection. It's not has some imprecisions. That uh, that's a tough word to say if it is an actual word. It's sometimes not the most precise of the data types. Uh, you can you can Google floating point precision if you so choose and learn more about that. But let's just say float first, second average. Now we have three types, uh, or we have three variables. We have first, second, and average, none of which have been initialized with a value. So we can say C out, enter the first number. And then we can say C in first correct? Yes. And you can see that uh, we have C out, and then of course there's C in. We won't always use C in, but for now as we're learning the language, we'll use it for the heck of it. And then we'll say C out, enter the second number. Creative, right? And we don't need end lines here because once they input the number, it'll, uh, because they're hitting enter, it'll move the caret to the next line. So, uh, and then we can say uh, CN second. Oops. I hate how it doesn't automatically pick what it's suggesting. And then we can do CL, or you know what, we'll just use average since we have it. Average equals First, we have to do first plus second divided by two. So now we're learning how to do the arithmetic, and this works. Uh, it's same as normal. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We have parentheses. Those are the important ones because we need to add it before we divide it. And then we can just do C out and say the average is don't forget the space between is and the uh, quotation mark, otherwise it'll the number will be right next to it. Average. And then inline. And you can see how we're chaining these together. Uh, I'll get into details with that later, but let's hit F7 and play around with this baby. So enter the first number, we'll say 8.5 we enter the second number at 6, and the average is 7.25. If you want to grab a calculator and check that, feel free to, but I think that uh, our program is pretty accurate and suffices. So uh, this is your kind of first little touch with C++. You learned how to output text. You learned how to input you learn how to do arithmetic and you learn different data types. So you can see you already learned four very important things to programming in a short video. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed and um, we'll play around with this later and just keep going and uh, see where it goes from there. Um, 
based on your guys' feedback, if you guys want C++, if you don't want it. But I'll um, see you guys later. Uh, let me know if you liked it or not. That would be pretty awesome. All right, later.